Greetings, AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, along with my fourth period class, which is my favorite fourth period class. Shh, don't tell my other names. We're going to talk about topic 2.9, example one. We're going to introduce the quotient rule here. So what we've got going on with the quotient rule, both for the audience and my students, is a brand new formula right? It looks a little bit more intense than the formulas that you perhaps saw back in the product rule days. A little bit more going on with it, but if you take a careful look at this, it should have a little bit of similarities with what you guys had seen from the product rule, right? Can you all kind of pick out two things that are a little different about this particular formula in comparison to the product rule? seems to be two things that are different. Number one, there is a minus sign, right? A minus sign right here instead of the plus sign. And the second thing that's definitely different is the fact that we have over a g of x squared. Now, obviously, recognizing those things is very dependent upon making sure that we've watched the product rule video and we're kind of comfortable with that. But the quotient rule is just like a springboard from the product rule. It's gonna be a very similar type of process. It's gonna have a very similar kind of feel when you guys are solving the problems. All right, so let's take a look at our first example. And as you can see, this example is definitely containing a quotient, right? You've got 5x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1. There's really very little that you can do to turn this into anything but a quotient. So we're kind of stuck with it, which means we need this new version of the derivative. So for our derivative, and you can say dy over dx, or you can say y prime, we just kind of start with the top, and it goes f prime times g. Okay, so f prime is 5, right? And then we multiply that by g, which is the denominator, x squared minus 1. So if it helps, we could think of the top as being the f, the bottom as being a g. By no means would you have to write that. But if it helps, throw it in there. And then we have a subtraction. f of x is going to be 5x plus 2. And then g prime is the derivative of the denominator, which is 2 times x. And all of this would be placed over the denominator squared. And essentially, you're done. That's where you could stop. I mean, that is the correct derivative. Uh, let's say that this was a derivative that you had to evaluate at a certain x. I would say start throwing in that number for x right now. Um, however, if this is a multiple choice question, it's likely going to be simplified a little bit more before you can start matching it. And all you have to do is just some algebra one type of maneuvering here. So you'll distribute the five. Now be careful here, because I'm going to distribute the minus and the two X. Hopefully uh, you all are okay if I do that at the same time. So if I multiply two X by five X, I get 10 X squared, but then the minus takes hold. Two X times two would normally be four X but I'm also going to distribute that minus. It does save an extra step. And then I still have x squared minus 1 squared. You will not have to FOIL that out. And then finally, I think we can combine a few things. We could rewrite this maybe in descending order. Um, actually, I can combine and do that. How about we do that? 5x squared minus 10x squared would be negative 5x squared. And then um, I have a minus 4x, and then I think I have a minus 5. And that's pretty much all that we can do with that numerator. The denominator, as I said, will stay just as he is. And that would be our result. And we can certainly check this with the graphing calculator. So we're going to switch over and do just that. So here we are with our trusty TI Inspire calculator. I've gone ahead and already entered the derivative that I want to take. So we'll just hit enter and we'll see what this gives us. And aside from factoring out the negative sign, you can see that this is all the same as what we had on, on paper there. 
So we're pretty much in good shape. We've got our first quotient rule solved for. I want you to stick around, watch some of the future videos. There's two more problems that I'm going to show you that uses the quotient rule. Anyhow, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.